Hello everyone. We are a pleasure to be partaking of this time with you all. We are the Supreme Alatam technical team. At this time, we have the opportunity to converse about the frequently asked question for Corestation. We will be going into some details for a selection of these facts. Please stay with us until the end. Let's get started. Our Suprema Latam Tech team is comprised by Eduardo Palma, who is at Mexico base, Lori Lopez at the Guatemala base, and Carolina Silva at the Colombia base. Thanks, Carolina, for uh, introducing us. Uh, thanks, everyone. Hello, same here, and thanks also, everyone. It's our pleasure being here. All right, then, let's get started with the topic we discuss today. Our question one is, how to reset Corestation network settings? Eduardo, would you help us answering this question? Yes, of course, Carolina. To reset that network settings, you should press the init button for at least three seconds to reset the Ethernet and RS-45 connection. Is it good to know that if an IP cannot be acquired from the DHCP server, the device IP should be in the 169.254 the next, the next segment? Thank you, Eduardo, for such unhelpful information. Let's go to the next question. All right. Then our next question is, how to perform a factory default reset of core station? Lori, would you be so kind in answering this question? Sure thing, Carolina. There are two ways to reset the core station back to factory settings. The first one, and although it's not mentioned in the device manual, core station factory default operates with the same logic as of the BioEntry W2 or BioEntry P2. You can only factory default the device and the physical one if the device has a certificate acquired from the server through secure communication with device. That is going to the server option, then setting the secure communication with device as use or activating it, and then click to the apply button. After we perform these changes, then we should go to uh, the button, the physical button in the device, the init button, and press it three times straight, and then wait for some milliseconds, and then press it once again, okay? After this happens, the device will take some time to come up again, and when it does, it will be in factory default. And the other option it is using the core stations at the manager, something similar, uh, we connect the core station with a cable to a network uh, PC or, or just uh, a desktop PC. And then we go to the browser at uh, the HTTPS 169.254.0.1 IP address with uh, the port 3001, okay? Then we log in into the setup manager and we click the factory default button on the configuration page. And that's it. You should then be able to uh, reset all the settings of conversation back to front. Okay. Nice, Lori. Thanks for that info. Okay, let's jump on to our next question. How to set our conversation IP address? Lori, I think you can help us with this one as well. Can you? Yeah, sure. The procedure is we first connect the current station to a PC and then we open again our web browser to the same address that I just said, 169.254.0.1 with the port 3001. And after we log in into the core station set the manager page, we should be able to configure the new IP address. And the other way of doing the same thing is by using BioStar 2. And from this, I am assuming that we have already connected the device to, to, to Firestar 2. In such case, we go to the device menu, then we locate the core station under the list, we click it, and right in the next part of the window, it will appear the configuration for the core station. Then we just scroll down a little bit, and we will find the network settings. We change the values as we desire. Then we go to the apply button, and that's it all the new IP addresses will be set. Thank you, Lori. Those procedures are really straightforward. All right then, the next question says, how many doors or what is the maximum number of doors that one core station can handle? Eduardo, what can you tell us about this question? 
<laughs> well, Carolina, our Intelligent Panel can handle up to 64 Slave devices connected in, a co in combination of its 4S45 channels. For example, 16 Slave devices for per each channel. Although the limit for each channel are 51, let us say 16 per channel to try distributing uh, the load to in, uh, across our panel. Then having this consideration in mind, we can say one code station supports up to 50 doors in the following configuration. Uh, 12 the, the M20 uh, by four relays each R equal to 48 available relays. Plus four relays embedded in our core station that make 52 and 52 readers, one per each relay. That makes it 52 doors using only RS45 slate devices. And just to, uh, to double check, 52 plus 12 are 64 devices then. Yes, this is correct. <laughs> and if working with Wigan devices again, we can use the DN20 as a station device. We use a 64 DN20 and per H DN20, we have got two Wigan interfaces. Hence, 64 by two equal 128. And taking, taking the four Wigan and Relays available embedded in, into our code station. We have 128 plus 4 equals 132 doors. Therefore, 130 doors can be configured by using the 20 and Wigan interfaces. Wow, that is such an amazing computation power the core station has. I have the doubt some other panel out there is able to perform as the core station does. Great. Thanks a lot, Eduardo. Let's go ahead to the next question. Okay, so our next question, as you can see in the slide on the screen is, can we use third-party card readers with core station? Lovery, what can you tell us about this? Well, the short answer is yes, we can. And the long answer will be explaining how. Let's see, uh, if the third-party card reader has a Wigan interface, we can share I use it with the core station, okay? Although there is one consideration, if the card reader has keypad, we do not support the single key output by this time, but we are planning on doing it in a couple of months, okay? And one more thing uh, that you forgot to ask about the third party fingerprint readers. Oh yes, what can you tell us about those? It is actually very similar as the previous one. If the third party reader has a way to send the information, as a Wigan compatible card code, we will be able to read that data using the core station. In the opposite way, our readers, specifically speaking, our slave readers, the XPASS D2 or the BioEntry R2, can also interface with third party panels by Wigan and by OSDP using card information as well. Thanks a lot, Lori. Let's see which question is the next. Okay. So this question is very attractive. It says, how to replace a third-party controller and Wigan readers with core station and XFAS D2 or BioEntry R2? Eduardo, this is your time to shine. Please enlighten us. <laughs> Thanks, Karina. Okay, let's see. You are speaking of replacing all equipment that implies we are reusing some of the cabling and previous installation, right? In such a case, besides the obvious of sizing a project of terms of how many readers the M20, Security 2 and Core Station will be using, it is highly important to deal with the cabling issue. What is the needed of what is the less requirement is that the cabling could be a shield to this part three lines for the RS45 communication. <clears throat> In the site has already present some cables which we use for a Wigan readers. Most likely that reading will be useful. Some of the recommended are uh, AWG24 uh, Belden twisted pair cable, uh, AWG24 uh, Alpha twisted bar cable. We recommend to install the terminated resistance also at the beginning and end of, of each RS45 DC chain. Uh, 120 on for the devices and to switch on the termination of the core station. Thanks a lot, Eduardo. Well, our next question says, which Suprema device can be used with core station? Eduardo, please help us answering this one. Okay, this is an easy one. Very much our distributed solution can be connected as a slate devices to our core station. That means all standalone devices or IP devices. 
In case of the slave devices, of course, all the X-Files D2 variants and the slave fingerprints readers are in trial too as well. Besides this, all peripherals are, as we tell them, the extension devices as the 2020, security 2 and 120. That's it. Thanks a lot, Eduardo. Very concise. Let's see what is the next question. Okay, Lowery, I think this one is for you. Please go ahead. All right. When the host computer goes offline, can the core station still work? The answer is yes. And under which conditions? Let's see. The core station will continue making authentications as a standalone, and all the events will be resynchronized with Biostar 2 once it gets reconnected. And uh, how many logs can the core station store in such conditions? The answer is five millions. Okay, so yes, it has enough capabilities to stay offline for a while. And about the authentication power, the core station can do 400,000 matches per second with genuine matching, okay? That means that if John Doe is in the inner core station database, along with other 399,999 users, the core station can find him within one second. Wow, that this is really a lot, isn't it? <laughs> yes, of course it is. And what happened if the slave device's communication is cut off from the core station? What would happen in that case? Well, two possible outcomes in that case. If the readers are purely a slave, uh, as the XPASD2 or the BioEntry R2, then not really much to do with that. The device will stop working. However, if the devices are intelligent and we synced the users beforehand, the devices will be still able to work after losing their communication with the core station. In any of those cases, the recommendation for the user is to add a physical protection to the wiring to avoid any of these eventualities. I see. Thanks a lot, Lori. All right, Eduardo, this one is for you. <laughs> Thanks, Carolina. Well, that's really easy. As you can see in the picture in the slides, uh, five units can be connected, one per each core station or a Spotify channel. One thing to add up is besides the facial device, you can still utilize the channel to connect more slide devices through or a Spotify communication. Thanks a lot, Eduardo. And well, we are arriving to the end. Before that, will you please, Lovery, tell us about this question? What is the power specification of core station? Well, the answer is pretty straight, I think. Now, the power supply for current station should be 12 volts supplying three amperes of current, okay? That is called the power in specification. And for the power out, what the core station gives out to the peripherals connected to it, it will be 12 volts again, but at 1.5 amperes. And the meaning of the latter is if we are trying to attach more than one slave to the core station, each of them, each of the slaves, should be powered by their own power supply. And just please remember to put all the grounds to a common point to avoid the irregularities in the voltage of current. Okay? I see, Lowry. Thanks a lot for that info. And our last question for today is, hey, wait, I know this one. I pay attention when your mates spoke of this topic. How many fingerprint readers can be connected to a core station? The answer is 64 devices, right, Mates? Yes, Karina, that's correct. <laughs> yes, it is correct. Okay, thank you. Then we have arrived to the end of this session. Before finishing, let me thank you, Lovery and Eduardo, for their help in answering this question. I know it was a very informative session for all of you who are watching us. Thanks again and see you in another time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, see you.